So they're going to look at some things that are happening in the world and we'll see how they are connected to biblical prophecy and where we are standing in the stream of time. Lies. In the Encyclopedia Britannica, the article about the Roman Catholic Church, they said it appears that the number of Christians had by this time grown sufficiently to alarm the government. The, the emperors seemed to recognize that Christianity would destroy the Roman Empire if it destroyed paganism. They did not foresee that Christianity would reach a compromise with the empire that it would become Roman. <clears throat> so according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, there Rome knew that it would die out if paganism is taken away. But they realized later that Christianity could, could reach a compromise with paganism and together they would form a, a religion out of Rome called a Roman Christian religion, which we, which we know today is Roman Catholicism. So in other words, uh, only compromise can bring into existence this system. So that means even in, in again, the growth of Catholicism in any region must bring must be brought about by a collapse or compromise of that religion with Rome or with Catholicism. When we go to Revelation 17, verse 2, who tells us about this woman. with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine fornication. So the kings of the earth, the rulers of the earth have committed fornication with her. So we have, we have this system where all rulers in the world are ready to do what the beast or what the woman wants. And that woman, we know the apostate church. We have seen that in the past lectures or even we shall have seen the future ones. So the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So in other words, whatever she has, she has taught, Catholicism has taught it to <clears throat> all the other the denominations and other people. But most important here that the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Now it doesn't say the presidents of the world, but it talks about kings. So in other words, all rulers in the world who, who had all the monarchs have to surrender their power unto the system. She says in Revelation 17, the Bible calls her mother, and Revelation 8 says, I sit as queen, I am not a widow, and I will never mourn. I am, and there is none beside me. I will never be a widow or suffer the loss of children. Isaiah 47, 8. So she knows, this church knows that she is the mother of all of these systems. And there is the, the, she will never be a widow. There is no time she will not have children or she will never, have, she will never be there a time when she doesn't have a husband. So anytime, all the time, there will be someone getting married to her. But the sad part of this is that, remember that Catholicism is both a beast and a church. So it's a woman and a beast. So it is a church and a political system. But the sad part of it is that this, the, the system we is the beast. The dragon gave him, the beast, his power, his throne, and great authority. So the, the political entity, which comes with the church and the state together, is dragon-driven. So the dragon is behind it. In this book, Enroll to Global Occupation, by Gary H. Carr, there is a chart there which I would like to magnify. We look at how would, how would Rome 
rule the world just with a small nation like this. So it has to create allies, and these allies, uh, let's look at some of them. So it had to create societies that would help rule on her behalf, so that all of it goes down to the New Age movement. We have the ancient mystic religions, Kabbalism, Gnosticism, Knights, Templars, Rosicrucians, Fenri, and, and down here, Freemason would control all of these organizations on behalf of of the power that will rule the whole world. And according to Daniel 7, the horn, which is the, the, the beast there with the 10 horns and seven organized as the papacy. So it would control even the old council, even all the churches, according to Philip as Levi, Simon Megas, who was a Christian, who had made himself a Christian and was baptized, was the one who surrendered uh, Christianity to, 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 to Rome, to, to Nero. So we expect a similar encounter when a Christian nation, which claims to be Christian, would surrender the power to Rome. If we look at the Knights Templars, these were one of those we see here, the Templars, uh, they, they had a crown having a cross in it. So you will see that they were soldiers, but they had a cross within a, a crown. So that tells you it would be a religious institution having soldiers fighting on, on behalf of, of a crown. And by then, we had very many kings, and the Pope himself was a king as well, as we shall see. So they, that is how they were. And uh, according to this, I'm not to go so fast, you will see that at the, their headquarters, find the Vatican flag where there is the Knights Palace, Latin Patriarchs, and uh, it shows you there that and there is the is, is the initiation ceremony which is being done showing you when they were inducted or they instituted by the Pope and they presented themselves to the papacy, they were allowed to operate in 11.3. And they were the protectors of what they call the Holy Grail. Now, there is a cup which Catholicism claims to have uh, collected the blood of Jesus in it, the real blood of Jesus, and that it is in there. So when the pilgrims go and make uh, a pilgrimage, they kiss around the, the cup and they are forgiven their sins ahead of time. So they protected this holy grail and they were the warriors and the bankers. So in other words, they had to control uh, the, the military. Okay, and then later came the Jesuit order, founded in August 15, 1534 by, by Spaniard Ignatius Loyola and sanctioned by the Pope Paul the, the third, September 27, 1540. What was the aim? Loyola wanted the order to be the champions of Catholic unity which could only be assured through an effective submission to Christ's vicar, which is the Pope, that is LP, Jesuit rocket. So in other words, the Jesuit order was brought in to bring Catholic unity. And ca Catholic unity can only be achieved by an effective submission to the Pope. So everyone must submit to the Pope.
and they bear this angel, which they claim to be Michael, wielding a sword over the children, the, 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 the questionnaire, who, whom do you serve? The Holy Father at Rome, the Pope, and the Roman Catholic Church universe throughout the world. Did you take an oath? I did, to destroy heretics and their governments and rulers. And to spare, the, to spare neither age, sex, nor condition. Listen to this, to be a corpse without any opinion or will of my own, but to implicitly obey my superiors in all things without hesitation of murmuring. And that's what it said there, that effective submission to the higher power. Will you do that? Yes, I will. For what purpose? To obey the orders of my general and superiors and execute the will of the Pope and faithfully fulfill the conditions of my oaths. Go ye then into all the world and take possession of all lands in the name of the Pope. So all lands belong to the Pope. So when the Pope visits any land, in fact, what he does most, he kisses that land to claim that it is really his. And there's always a trio of the of the reigning pope, the white pope, we have the Jesuit general who is the black pope, and then we have the head of the Inquisition. But later the Inquisition was changed to congregation for the the doctrine of the faith. So it no longer has the other name which was bad. Now the war was transferred from, from, from physical to, to doctrinal war. So in other words, you have to be very careful. They know the Jesuit order no longer operates or the Catholic Church no longer operates yeah, against people as far as wars are concerned physically. But it is now in doctrine. Indoctrination is what they want most. And there you see Benedict with the order of the Jesuits. There you see them, and there's a man behind there. You will notice as we shall go on. And uh, there we see them. And when Pope Yoga Mario Bicoglio became the Pope, the general also resigned. And uh, since they had just changed from Peter Hans Wolfenbach, who has just died, and then to, uh, to Father Adolfo Nicholas, later the, there is the council, and later the, the, he has to meet the Pope, because it is a rule that when a Pope is elected, he has to seek wisdom from the general or the black Pope. And uh, there you see the meeting, and there is a entire curia of the Jesuit order. Now, when the, of course, the, 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 when Benedict resigned, there had to come a new pope, but this pope was a Jesuit, or is a Jesuit, and they meet with the Philippines Jesuits, and... And there again, they meet with the Black Pope as a rule. And uh, there was also an election because the, 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 the Jesuit general also resigned. And when they elected in their conclave, again, you see the new general, who is Father Arturo Sosa, became the, the general. And since this one is a Jesuit as well, he had to attend. And it's interesting when you look at his robes, he always put on the he always puts on the black inside the white. Because he's, he's part of this Jesuit order. So in the history of of of, of the Vatican, we have four reigning popes. We have two black popes all alive and two white popes all alive. But but According to this, the quarters of the papacy today is all Jesuit oriented. That means it is time now to fulfill what they wrote, Catholic unity. And that's why the Pope moves around in unity and unity and unity, which was 
what Ignatius Loyola thought. Ceremony of induction and extreme oath of the Jesuits. You have been told to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities, provinces, states that were at peace, and incite them to deeds of blood, involving them in war with each other. Is it possible that what we see in Russia and Ukraine, is it possible that uh, this war is created to incite hatred for what purpose? and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous, cultivating the arts and sciences and enjoying the blessings of peace, to take sides with the combatants and to act secretly with your brother Jesuit. So is it possible that even within the war, there is a side where the man talks to this one and again talks to the other side? With who might be engaged on the other side, but openly opposed to that which, with which you might be connected. So openly they are fighting the war, but secretly they are meeting with someone. For what purpose? Only that the church might be the gainer in the end. So whatever is done here in wars, in deeds of blood, the church may be the gainer in the end. In the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace and that the end justifies the means. So when you see people signing peace treaties, the conditions that are fixed there, the church must be the gainer in the end. That is interesting. So in 1550, Pope Julius declared this claim to universal temporal political power evidenced by a new coin. He issued its motto having read, the nation and kingdom that will not serve me shall perish. So the nation and the kingdom. So could that include all monarchs that if they don't, they will, be, they will perish? And this was seen that all monarchs were during the French Revolution, which never submitted to them, were all annihilated. They are all destroyed from during the French Revolution, the American Revolution, the the Russian, the, the, the German, everywhere they did the revolution, all monarchs that were not willing to serve the nation and the kingdom. That means any kingdom standing today must have submitted to the system. And he claims to be the supreme king of the world. He has divine spiritual and temporal power as supreme king of the world. So there could be other kings and other emperors, but he is the supreme king of the world. That is Romanism as old power. And the purpose is to destroy Protestantism. Now, where is Protestantism situated? Because they said Protestantism is already rearing out and sinking to decay. So if Protestantism must be destroyed, and Catholic unity should be gained because the Jesuit order came specifically at the time when Luther or Protestantism came up and challenged Catholicism. And the only way they could bring it back is by the use of the Jesuit order to counteract Protestantism. And everyone knows that it is in history that they, they came for counter-reformation. They are known for counter-reformation, to counter Protestantism. Okay, so there they have IHS, which they could say in his service. But of course, in the occult, it has some other meaning. I don't want to go into that because I we have little time. But if you continue, you will notice that even in their church, the Church of the Gezu, which is the Jesuit church in Rome, you will see that there are, there are statues there and there which you see there. And if you bring them closer, you'll see that there is another one here. They show Ignatius Loyola having the solar wheel on his head. In other words, the sun, the knowledge of the sun, which is on his head. And he he's stepping on Martin Luther. And there is Francis Xavier, who was also Jesuit, and is stepping or none other than Calvin. And Xavier, Francis Xavier, was the one who 
whom they claim to be the negotiator. And, uh, and this is where I think Francis, because the, since Francis of Assisi never had anything to do with the Jesuits, but it is Francis Xavier. So is it possible that Pope Francis perhaps picked his name from Francis Xavier, not Francis of Assisi? Let, we, let us just leave it at that point. Never before in the course of the world history had such a society appeared. The old Roman Senate itself did not lay schemes for world domination with the greater certainty of success. So in other words, it was the Jesuit order that gave success to, to the Catholic Church uh, in ruling the entire world. So they, the Jesuits, have constantly mixed themselves up in court and state intrigues that they must, in justice, be reproached with striving after universal dominion. So they have to rule the whole world. That is their agenda. And uh, Michelangelo Tamburini said to, was talking to the Duke of Brancas, this was a, 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 a ruler, and he said, See, my Lord, from this room, from this room, I govern not only Paris, but China. Not only China, but the whole world without anyone knowing how it's managed. So already the Duke was informed that the general was the one ruling. So from this city where you have come, I am the, the controller of everything. Okay. And there in 1946, there was this general, the photo is shown there of who was called Jean Baptist Janssen, and he was um, the, the, the in command of the military order of Malta, so Scottish Shriners, Freemasonry, the Order of the Illuminati, the Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Ku Klux Klan, the Reno Right, the Nation of Islam, and its private army called the Fruit of Islam. Mafia Commission, the Opus of Day, along with the host of Lesser brother, Brotherhood. So, still, the superior general of the Society of Jesus, which is the Jesuit order, controls all the others. Remember, the objective was and is still to destroy the effects of the Reformation and to establish the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. That is behind the dictators by Leo H. Lehmann. 1942. So, Protestantism, the Reformation, everything they taught must go. Moreover, the Pope has thousands of secret agents worldwide. They include the Jesuits, the Knights of Columbus, Knights of Malta, Opus of Day, and the others. The Vatican is intelligence service and its field resources are second to none. So there is none that is compared to this system. And there, if we see the Knights of Malta, this is how they put on, again, you'll see the, 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 the cross, which is white, and uh, there is the order, and you'll notice there is a crown here, and it has that cross on top there, and these are the Knights of Malta. The Grand Council of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, 1960, uh, headed, headquartered in Rome, these knights of Popo Caesar control the banking, industry, and the military complexes of the world. So the military, the banking, the industry is controlled by the motors. They oversee Chase Manhattan Bank with branches in Moscow and New York. They rule the international intelligence community, the KGB in the East and the CIA in the West, in restoring the despotism of the Dark Ages. So they are also working towards that. That is horizon, the Mount, the Knights of Mount is crossed. Cross that Edith, Edith Simon. The, the Sovereign Military Order of Malta is an allied Roman Catholic knighthood. Listen carefully, it is a Roman Catholic knighthood headed by a grandmaster 
who works at the best of the pop. Membership is derived from politics, industry, finance, military, intelligence, media, and entertainment. That covers the entire world and its resources. Knights are the male, and dames, the females, first swear allegiance, loyalty to the Pope, and then to their country, defending the faith. Question which faith is defended here? Of course, the Catholic faith, and helping fellow members while serving the order constitutes the ethics. So you can help other fellow members do schools, do everything, but serving the order constitutes their ethics. Okay, so who are the members in this motor? There is the Grand Master during that time. And if you look at the Knights of Motor, are mainly involved in one Commonwealth nations, headed by the Queen of Elizabeth II, made up of 53 countries. So the Knights of Malta are the owners of the Commonwealth. So what is Commonwealth about? It is about the Knights of Malta, because they're the ones who created it. And we have the central banks, they show you the Bank of England itself is under their control. And the, we have the military corporations, energy mindings, information corporations, the media, like software uh, de departments, all of these are under their control. Energy, transportation, pharmacy, pharmaceutical corporations. That is why we can see the pharmaceutical companies are today working together with the military and again with the information. So you will find the same man, Bill Gates, who is a software, and now he is into pharmaceutical stuff, doing the vaccines and research, and again, ordering that the military should do this. So you see, they are, it is one order. And it's interesting, who is that? That is Queen Elizabeth II of England. She is the grand dame of Malta. So that tells you whom does she really, whom is she subservient to? Of course, the man in Rome, the man in white, even the one of, of, in, of uh, Netherlands, there you see them, okay? So let's look at Queen Elizabeth II. This is in 19, a long time ago when she is knighted first she was taken into the order of the druids which is an ancient cult of, which initiated people into many things let's look at that
So the queen was knighted, or she was she was initiated into the order of the druids when she was still a young lady. She was still a princess. And now let's look at her becoming a queen and the speech she gave. Palace of Westminster awaited the arrival of Her Majesty the Queen. From this historic place, center of the British Commonwealth of the Free Peoples, has gone forth a pattern of parliaments, the Westminster model. In the chamber of the House of Lords were assembled the peers of the realm, their wives, and the ladies who were life peeresses. Facing them was the throne, soon to be occupied by the Queen. For this was the occasion of the state opening of Parliament. Through the Royal Gallery and stately procession, came the gentlemen at arms. The Lord Great Chamberlain, the Marquis of Chumley, received the imperial crown and proceeded to place it upon the table to await Her Majesty's entrance. Great servant of Queen and Country in War and Peace by Count Slim received the sword of state. The cap of maintenance was to be borne by Lord Mills. Though we were privileged to film the state opening of Parliament two years ago, this is the first time it has been filmed in colour. Now through the Royal Gallery came the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester and the Duchess of Kent, proceeding to their places in the House of Lords. In a few moments, Her Majesty would arrive at the Palace of Westminster, awaited by the Earl Marshal, the Duke of Norfolk, and the Lord Great Chamberlain. Escorted by the household cavalry, the Queen and Duke rode in the Irish coach from Buckingham Palace. established pattern of the royal arrival on the state occasion. Centuries have passed since the monarch rode to Westminster to give instructions to his legislators. And the affections of her many people proceeding towards the throne from which, for the seventh time in her reign, she was to deliver the royal speech. As always, the legislative program outlined therein was prepared by the government to refer to measures which the ministers proposed to introduce in the forthcoming session. The Lord, Lord Great Chamberlain, with the Queen's assent, commanded Black Rod, Lieutenant General Sir Brian Horrocks, to go to the House of Commons and bid its members to come to the Upper House. The state opening of Parliament is the one occasion in the year when the Queen, Lords and Commons meet together in person. Black Rod returned, having conveyed the summons to members of the Lower House. The Commons were headed by the Speaker, followed by the Prime Minister, and the leader of the opposition. Party strife was banished for the time being. All eyes in the now crowded assembly were directed towards the Lord Chancellor, Lord Kilmuir, who placed the copy of the Queen's speech in Her Majesty's hand. In the that with the whole Commonwealth is familiar, Her now Majesty let's listen graciously to speech. delivered her speech. My lords, members of the House of Commons, Your husband and I Look forward eagerly to the series of visits we shall make next year in the Commonwealth, where we shall renew and extend the friendships which we value so very highly. In the early part of the year, we shall visit India and Pakistan on the invitation of the presidents of those countries. And I welcome especially this opportunity of seeing for the first time something of these two great nations of the Commonwealth. 
My government will play their full part in maintaining the North Atlantic Alliance and the other regional pacts to which they belong. I ask you to make their contribution to safeguarding us. The friendship which links us to our great ally, the United States of America, is a powerful element in the defense of peace. Throughout the coming session, my government will continue to give resolute support to the work of the United Nations. The improvement of relations between East and West remains a primary object of their policy. In particular, they will go on working for the success of the Geneva Conference on the discontinuance of nuclear weapons tests and will do their utmost to achieve comprehensive disarmament under effective international control. They will continue to cooperate with our partners in consolidating the European Free Trade Association. At the same time, they will work towards the political and economic unity of Western Europe on a basis satisfactory to all the governments concerned. My Lords and members of the House of Commons, I pray that the blessing of Almighty God may rest upon your The ceremony was now completed. Each company had witnessed one... Okay. Hello. So we have seen, we have seen that the, the House of Commons was there and her speech specifically talked about the Commonwealth, how her military, the forces will go in to fight for peace. And she has talked about U.S. as a very good ally in what, what they are going to do, and they are going to work together. So original, already in her speech, which speech I believe she never wrote, because always presidents have speech writers and kings, this speech was written by someone. So already it shows you that whatever she's doing, it has nothing to do with the kingdom, there's someone behind, because already I've seen she's a knight of Malta. Whatever they have, is from that angle. And now, this, this is, uh, let's see her visit it's with the different pops. After 70 years as monarch, Queen Elizabeth II has met with various popes. In 1951, she met Pope Pius XII when she was still a princess. Then 10 years later, Pope John XXIII, K. Okay. In 2010, Queen Elizabeth met with Pope Benedict XVI at the Holy Rood Palace in Edinburgh, Scotland. The Queen made her way back to Rome in 2014 when she returned to the Vatican and met Pope Francis. On that occasion, she was accompanied by her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, who passed away in 2021. Queen Elizabeth II, the longest ruling monarch in British history, dedicated her reign to any other British monarch. <laughs> Yeah. So the, she has always been part of those who go to the Pope because she has to be subservient, whether they like it or not. So whatever may be happening is, is, uh, is just something on, on the outside because this is England, the headquarters of Protestantism, as we may know, as it was known, because England was where the King James Bible comes from, which, which brought problems when the whole House of Parliament became Protestant. So in other words, as we speak, the, by the time the Queen comes into, into existence, Protestantism had already compromised with Catholicism, and many things have taken place during the time of uh, Cardinal Newman, who was a, a Protestant, 
and then converted to Catholicism, but many claim he was a disguised Catholic, because of that, and fighting that the crown is taken to Rome. Now, what is this commonwealth that they're talking about? Let's see what commonwealth is all about. From British Empire to Commonwealth. When Great Britain lost the American colonies in 1783, the British Empire was still growing. During the 1800s, New Zealand, Canada, Australia, and India all became important colonial countries. By the middle of the 1800s, the British Empire controlled over one quarter of the world's population. Colonies that had mostly British immigrants, like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, were given a large degree of self-rule, as early other colonies, like India and South Africa, had hard to become independent. After World War II, the end of the British Empire was unavoidable. India independent in 1947. Within a few decades, the rest of the colonies gained their independence. The Commonwealth. The 50 of the former colonies have remained loosely connected in an organization called the Commonwealth. Like the old British Empire, the Commonwealth covers every geographical area, culture, and religion. The Commonwealth countries have various kinds of governments, but nearly all of them have the British monarch. That means that the Queen has a symbolic or ceremonial role. It runs the country. Some people... So have you heard that? That it is the Queen who has the influence, but the government can run the country. So behind the scenes, it is the queen who has the big say, but the, the country, the government in that country can run the country. And they have a, a, an influence in religion, in the politics, and in everything joke that the only thing the Commonwealth countries have in common is no wealth. It is true that many of them are third world or developing countries. However, the Commonwealth also includes wealthy nations like Canada and Australia. The Commonwealth nations share some common culture. They are all English speaking. The countries that had many British immigrants, like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, now have English as a first language. Others, like India and South Africa, traditions such as playing cricket and rugby are also shared culture in some Commonwealth countries. The Commonwealth Games are held every four years, even though many big sporting nations like the USA and Russia are not part of the Games, the countries that do participate make up 30% of the world's population. Most of the nations that once belonged to the British Empire. Okay, so it is the British Empire, but it was changed from the British Empire. Commonwealth. Now, anyone could say, oh, 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 there's a change of name. It is independence. You are independent, but you are smart. As you don't have your own wealth, the wealth is common in it. Isn't that what we hear as common good? So already in England, we think common. So all of these countries were gathered and given a, 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 a dame who is a knight to call a commonwealth. So it is easier in different countries. So now there we see the ones of South Africa. There we see the 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 the, the, the one of uh, Nelson Mandela. We see that Desmond Tutu. Okay, these are all putting on 
the, the Knights of Malta initiation thing. So it seems that all men in this world have been part of this order. There she, you see her knighting. Some tonight people into the order, and we have. And if you look at Get, he is um, the king of computer software. Bill Gates has received an honorary knighthood from the queen, and it says here the queen has spoken to him about using computer. He said after private audience with her. As an American citizen, he cannot use the title KBE after his name. So he would say uh, Bill Gates, KBE, which is Knight of the British Empire. Okay, so he cannot use since he comes from, uh, from, from America. So he is a Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire. So these are Knights and the Commanders of the, the British Empire. And was perfected by the Jesuits, significant tool in, a, in effective, in accomplishing their purposes among Protestants. They teach that a true Mason is not quit bound, he arises with the divine illumination of his that action must be universal. So they don't care whether, what, whether, what. But look at the word universal itself is Catholic. So a true Mason must be Catholic in nature. He can go anywhere because he only realizes with a true understanding the oneness of all spiritual truths. This is typical Catholic Franciscan theology of bringing everyone to be correct or right. And this man in the book, Mystical Masonry, says it is far more important that men should strive to become Christ than they should strive to believe that Jesus was Christ. And there was this war in England when the Scottish was saying that we cannot have a king, yet we have King Jesus. So how can we have a head of the church when the Bible says Christ is the head of the church? Because the queen is the head of the church of England. So how can you have a head of the church, yet there is Christ at the church? And there was a very mystery. So when she uh, in, uh, she visited a school uh, of, of the Royal Masonic in England. Let's look at it. The title is Yaz, because he's the new king of England. We shall not go all through them. You can read for yourself. Commander in the Royal Navy, he is the captain in the Royal Navy Group. Captain is of the Air Force. He has been a soldier, and he is the same. Oh, Francis is welcoming Prince Charles and Camilla to a private meeting at the Vatican. Nine-day tour 
to three European countries. To reinforce CTN News Nightly Vatican correspondent Mary Shevlin is one of just a few journalists of royal arrival. She joins us from Rome. Mary, what was the focus of the discussion with Pope Francis? Lauren, we know these two leaders have quite a lot in common. They both are very concerned about the situation of Chris environment. These are issues that they have found that they can work on together, Catholic all the way down to hierarchy to, to the faithful. So I think uh, focusing, on, uh, focusing on peace, of course, what they can do in their respective actions uh, to promote peace. In fact, Pope Francis gave the prince a bronze of an olive branch and said, you may you all, you go. And for their part, the royals gave Pope Francis some produce there and their high grove estate and Camilla assured Pope Francis very good. Excellent. Is there an ecumenical impact? There is, Lauren. As we know, the reigning monarch uh, of England and the two churches have been separated since the year 1534 and the churches remain separated. So there's always an ecumenical aspect royals come to visit at the Vatican. Uh, so, But we know that Pope Francis has reached out just this year alone, Lauren, to make um, a grand, grand gesture towards the Anglican community. He went to the Anglican Church here in Rome, and he said if he is able to go to South End for the first time ever, he wants to bring the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Lowe, making concrete steps towards unity. Very quickly, we have seconds. What else is the royal couple doing? Well, we know that today uh, uh, Prince Charles went to an English school, a British school around that educates the children. And then later he went to the seminary for the uh, UK and Britain and Wales, uh, where they educate their seminaries in the Catholic faith. We, he visited uh, that Catholic seminary before heading over here uh, to meet with Pope Francis. When he, they arrived here at the Vatican, went into the secret archives, which means documents reserved just for the Vatican or the Holy Father, and they saw some historic documents, including, for example, Mary Queen of Scots, the last letter uh, that she ever wrote she was uh, executed. So it bears many interesting things. They spent about an hour in there in the archives and the Vatican Library, and then came to meet with Pope Francis tomorrow. They have Austria on the last leg of this European tour. Okay, thank you so much. It's nightly Vatican correspondent. Talk to you soon. Thank you. So, they have told us that already they were the, they went to the Vatican and there is an ecumenical impact that will happen when the two leaders meet. The churches remain separated on the surface, but they are united. But in purpose, united, but they remain on the outside uh, separated. But they are working together. He is so the, the Prince Charles, who is now the King Charles, he is also all about the environment. So no matter what, whoever will sit on the throne, it does not matter. It will be always the Vatican's way of doing things. It doesn't matter. And there, they tell us. Prince Charles has spent most of his life waiting. But now, says former royal correspondent Charles Ray, the longest serving heir to the throne in British history has a new, and very immediate role. It's very much, the, the, you know, the, the queen is dead, God save the king. Simple as that. It's, it's almost a seamless transition, and there will be, and then there will be a, 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 he will have it sit on the throne and get the, get the crown at a, at a later date. So uh, it will be seamless in that, in that sense. I mean, from the moment that the Queen passes away, Charles is king. It's, it's that simple. Born in 1948, Charles became heir apparent at the age of three. The Queen acceded to the throne on the death of her father, George VI. Following an unhappy time at school in a remote area of the Scottish Highlands, he studied at the University of Cambridge. He was made Prince of Wales by the Queen at the age of 20. Charles, Prince of Wales, to become your liege man of life and live. Charles then entered the military before leaving the country on royal duties in 1976. 
as new subjects has been at times pretty. Following years of speculation about his marriage, Charles married 20-year-old Lady Diana Spencer in 1981, a dazzling wedding ceremony at St. Paul's Cathedral. Two sons and new heirs, William and Harry, later, marriage ended in 1992. The decision was apparently amicable at first, but emerged as acrimonious by the time of their eventual divorce in 1996. That with regret, the Prince and Princess of Wales have decided to separate. The union was said to have been a disaster from the start. The tragedy was compounded by Diana's death in a car crash in Paris a year later. Charles was left looking an unlikely solder, and the royal watchers openly questioned whether he would ever be crowned. Author Penny Jr. maintains he is a popular figure. There are always going to be people who don't like him because he has been quite a controversial figure. He, when the Queen came to the throne, I don't think anybody disliked her because nobody really knew. Charles has been around for over 70 years and he, he has been active in those years. He's got involved in, in all sorts of quasi-political areas um, and expressed his views. But anybody that has come across Charles, I would say, who knows him, will, will love him. Charles's long-term relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles became more public after Diana's death. The couple were married quietly in 2005, after gradually appearing in public together and becoming part of the royal circle. Charles's approval rating also gradually improved, Earnest by the popularity of his two sons, who also began undertaking more official senior royal duties to Queen Elizabeth scaled back her workload due to ill health. Her health was Minister of the History of Monarchy, Anna Whitelock, says the transition from heir to king is not going to reflect or represent a fresh, aged, elderly monarch extending to the throne, even though, of course, he's been Prince of Wales for so many years. Um, I think, you know, that he does have a potential relevance around the environment, but I don't think he's going to end up feeling, you know, that he's particularly the level of um, his mother, the Queen. Okay, so... We have seen that the, the queen, they already decided he was supposed to be the heir of the, but he is also as initiated and as equal. So we, we don't need, we don't have any speculations or whether King Charles is this and how people speak. It doesn't matter who sits on the throne, what matters is the fulfillment of what the throne requires. And since the throne is moved by someone somewhere, uh, the man in white, then it, should, it shouldn't bother people. No matter who sits on the throne of England, it will continue to serve. Since it's already Commonwealth, since it's already the environment in his mind, and he has always been advocating for that, maybe it is time for him to fulfill what in, but it is time for him to come in and fulfill it. May God help us to see these things as they, they come in the world, because he told us when you see these things, lift up your eyes unto heaven where your redemption cometh. So in other words, when we see these things, we know that climate change, commonwealth, whether which ruler, whether which ruler, it does not matter. It is inconsequential to which ruler rules, as long as all bow down to the man in white. So as professor students and those who are going ahead, we know that we should not take side to whether this one will be good or that. It is all the same company of men and the woman or the beast is all controlling them. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let's pray.
help us our Heavenly Father in the times we're living in. We're seeing many things happening in the world and you concerned. But we have seen that it doesn't matter which man rules, but to help every Christian who has watched that the times have come when everything is to be fulfilled. Rulers are dying, others are coming on, and we are supposed to look at the prophetic picture and the Bible to show us where we are heading to. Please be with us and guide us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.